Oh, welcome, one and all, to Adam Isherwood's Oxford Laboratory. Adam, always a pleasure. Boy, is it nice to see you again. How's it going, sir? Yeah, not too bad. Good to see you back on the back on the bike and uh, back in the lab for a bit of bit of testing. See you, see where you are physiologically post injury. And today we're going to start proceedings with the VO2 max test. It's a three minute ramp all the way to exhaustion, where along the way Adam should be able to calculate from the gas exhaled where my lactate threshold one lies, but also my anaerobic threshold, i.e. my FTP, before we head rather too rapidly for my liking to exhaustion for the VO2 max. And then we're gonna run the LT1 test, the lactate threshold one test. What will that involve, Adam? 12 minutes in, 200 watts. I'm well into the ramp test here, and you can see that I dual recorded my power output. 225. Using my Favero Asioma pedal. 250. I did this to compare my power outputs on a very accurate lab bike, which was setting the required power using ERG mode. 275. With the power meter that I use in everyday life. 300. I find that power meters from different companies are prone to different measurements. And here, the correctly calibrated asiomas were about five to 10 watts lower than the lab bike. Huh. Oh. 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 And always 25 to 35 watts down on previous. I didn't think I'd make it through to 300. Now, how accurate is the power meter on the lab bike here? Uh, so the lab bike's 0.5% accurate. Um, which is basically as good as you'll get. Uh, Proper emotional that, and the results are in. Adam, talk us through the data, please. Yeah. So, um, so we've got a. I'd say it's probably quite a, quite a promising outcome in terms of the the VO2 max. So mm -hmm. the um, the the kind of the the milliliters of oxygen that um, Phil's able to use per minute. So when it's scaled to scaled to body weight. So obviously Phil's lost a little bit of weight with the inability to eat solid foods and things like that. Um, it's actually, his VO2 max has dropped, but not by a huge amount. So from 61 milliliters per minute per kilo mm -hmm. down to 59. Where's that on here? Uh, so it's just here. Um, so it's actually, that's, that's pretty, um, that's, yeah, it's, that's not a bad, not a bad showing. I think, you know, with Phil's obviously been able to do a decent amount of kind of of work on the on the watt bike and I think that's that's probably led to quite a, a good retraining of the of this of this VO2 max so well, I haven't done any actual VO2 max intervals so no but what a lot of what will determine the um kind of the, the physiological determinants of this VO2 max are things which could still be stimulated by doing lower vol kind of lower intensity oh. things so that whilst if you were trying to actually kind of push your VO2 max up from the level that you had it previously, yeah, you'd want to be starting to do the kind of higher intensity intervals and things like that. But elements such as, um, yeah, uh, generally it's taken that for, uh, for most individuals, it's, a, it's an oxygen delivery. It, oxygen delivery is a limiting factor to, to kind of maximal oxygen use. Uh, in that instance, a lot of that's determined by things like kind of capillary density. So the um, very small vessels that, um, blood vessels that kind of run through your through your muscles, so in your legs, so your kind of quad muscles, um, and, and your glutes as well, um, and those the the kind of capillarization you get from years of training as Phil's had, they they won't be lost particularly quickly. That you know they might they, they might be become kind of inactive. You might not get a huge amount of blood flow going through these capillaries, but actually they're still there. And you have lots of contact points around these the muscles, and same thing with um, mitochondria. They you're not gonna. They, they, it tends not to the energy cells the yeah energy. so they're kind of the powerhouse of the cell the, the kind of the bit of your your muscles where the um 
where you're kind of yeah, breaking down fats and carbohydrates in the presence of oxygen, using that to, to generate energy to push through the pedals. Um, whilst they may kind of fall into dysfunction and the, the capacity they have to use the oxygen to generate this energy, whilst that probably did drop off when yeah, you know, when Phil was unable to cycle and wasn't you know moving around as much and was limited by the the brace and everything like that, that that capacity's probably come back quite quickly because he has been quite fit. You know, got a retraining effect. Things like, um, for example, it's called satellite cells that they kind of hold the the genetic material for for um, for muscles. You know, it, um, the they they tend to re be retained even if you then stop using those muscles so then when you come back to using them again you get much more bang for your buck with the mm. the the adaptive response to um to the training so you know you you retraining would have been a lot quicker than initially the training load that would have been required to get to that fitness point so muscle first. memory is a real thing in terms of the genetic dna via the, the capillary density and the mitochondria and the muscles and that's why um, once you've built fitness you've built strength you can lose that intermittently but it's quick to regain muscle memory is a real thing yeah so actually if you've if you've previously been fit and then you've lost it through through injury in this instance or you know illness or something like that you you basically primed yourself to get it back a lot quicker and that's been quite nicely shown here so the um i mean he has lost so is is the the absolute uh, VO2 peak? So the kind of the non uh, body weight corrected amount is now 3.7. So that has dropped off a decent amount. It was 4.37 before. So it's, it, you know, so I can do myself some VO2 max intervals and bring yeah, it back up yeah, over time so, when I'm ready. Yeah, and, and you'd expect actually that you're probably your VO2 max per kilogram actually will probably flatline for a bit because you'll get fitter but you also hopefully your body weight will come back as you, yeah. you know you've probably if some of your muscles have atrophy oh, i've got my new teeth now so i can actually <laughs> eat solid food so let's hope the body weight starts to come back up so good news to anybody who was once fit and is thinking about getting back on a bike whether indoors or outdoors get back on a bike get back in a gym muscle memory the mitochondria the capillaries it's a real thing you'll get fit quick Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, it, it, there's a common phrase in, uh, in, you know, in people who go to the gym, especially this idea of beginner games. You get a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of bang for your buck initially, so the, um, yeah. your body kind of very rapidly adapts to um, the, the stimulus you're giving it. Whereas the, within this, if you've been fit before, you'll get beginner games on steroids. Basically, it'll be it'll be doubling down. It's it's the kind of the easy adaptations, the ones where you've got like your, your body's. You know not too far away from its baseline so it's, it's more happy to to uh, to adapt rapidly and then laid on top of that the fact that you've you've you know you're kind of primed to mm. then get those fitness gains even more quickly so yeah if, if you've uh yeah as phil says if you've been injured or been off the bike for a while get, get back, back on, on because uh yeah you 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 will be yeah you'll be every ride you'll be putting down 10 15 watts more and it'll be you know, fantastic and uh, that won't last forever but um you can get you can get back towards your fitness pretty quickly. And that's that's even the professionals as well. They'll often, they, you know, in, in the off season, they may take a month, two months completely off the bike mm -hmm. and they'll actually lose a decent amount of fitness in that time. Okay, they're still going to be pretty good because they're professionals, but and, you know, they're genetic freaks. But, you know, they may not have a huge, you know, their actual kind of mm -hmm. relative fitness will have dropped off a lot. But then within a few, you know, within a, you know, get back on the bike within a few weeks, they'll be, um, it'll really come back quickly. Yeah. It's a similar similar mechanism here, maybe not yeah. not quite to the same absolute levels, but similar kind of relative changes. So in the wise words of Aerosmith, get back, get back on a saddle again. Let those mitochondria and those capillaries do all the heavy lifting for you, get fit. Anyway, take us through my um, FTP or my anaerobic threshold. Yeah, so I've, I think this, this is potentially a, um, a, a bit of an artifact that's coming out of the fact that you've not been able to do upper end stuff. So I think you might, might be getting a slightly, a slightly less natural kind of ventilatory response to this exercise, uh -huh. especially with the, and you've got the, the brace on as well, which is uh, particularly kind of changing your breathing patterns possibly. Um, I think it's looking like, so usually for this, for this VT2, so the, the, the gas threshold that should align with the critical power of the FTP, respiratory compensation mm. points and other, another way of um, way that it's termed 
you, you're looking for a, the inflection point between um, the VCO2 amount of carbon dioxide you're producing and your ventilator equivalent, so the, basically the, the the volume that you're breathing in and out. Tell so us uh, what that inflection point looks well, like. Well, so it should. It, this isn't particularly clean. I think yes. this is yeah possibly because Phil's not been going up. We've got two so inflection so. points, haven't they? One yeah, is yeah, definitely around. Yeah. Well, yeah, so, so there seems to be one that's down actually below what well, we'll get onto in a second, but below what we've calculated to be his uh, his VT one. So that's physiologically impossible. You can't have you can't have that. You know, they they happen sequentially. That can't exist. I'm looking at it. I'm, I'm just doing this by eye um, because it's, it does look like there's a second inflection point. It's coming up. It's probably, it's probably about, and the, if we were doing this, um, we won't do it today, but we'll possibly do it down the line um, as Phil gets back towards fitness. I'd, I'd like to, this would definitely need a, um, uh, a validatory lactate testing um, ramp test as well, and we're kind of narrowing down on that range. It's coming out about about 240 something in that region um i wouldn't say with a huge amount of confidence but it's in in that region they're looking at the heart rate and other kind of things and the um the rer for example and oddly enough as you're going to see right now 240 on the lab bike is around about i guess 235 or so on the seo most which is roughly in line with what i would expect from my zwift ftp test um earlier this week check it out Coming up to halfway through a Zwift FTP test, preceded by the five minute VO2 max effort. That was super difficult. Holding 243 to 244 watts. In order to ensure an accurate comparison against the laboratory test that you're seeing now, I went full gas on the first five minute VO2 max effort that precedes a 20 minute test. And you can see there, no expense was spared. It was proper emotional. The heart rate soared like a phoenix. And then a 20 minute test was proper hard. I paced it nicely and gradually built from 242 watts to right at the end there, 248 watts. Anyway, turning to the data. You can see here that the power through the axiomas as shown in training peaks for the 20 minute test was 261 watts. And that means at 95%, it would say my FTP is about 248 watts, i.e. FTP equal hopefully to the anaerobic threshold, albeit I think my anaerobic threshold is gonna be considerably lower. And that compares to the power through the Watt Bike Pro, which is being used in Zwift here, and I had 248 watt average for the 20 minute test and a 236 watt FTP. So, because I have one consistent power source, the Asioma pedals, that's gonna also be attached to the lab bike, I'm gonna be able to transpose all of the different powers and results in order to calculate an accurate anaerobic threshold, AKA FTP, whether I'm on the Watt Bike Pro, whether I'm outdoors, eventually, on my bike using the Asiomas, or indeed, whether I'm in the lab. It's, so as um, Phil said, you know, he's, done, he's done his uh, his FTP test, and this is the one that aligns to aligns to critical power. It aligns to maximal lactate steady state. If we did it with lactates, it roughly aligns to this VT2. Um, yeah, this is the in the coming back to the the gym parlance. This is the this is that's the sexy threshold. That's the the big the bench press one. That's the one everyone likes to, <laughs> to show off with. It's the bench press <laughs> of the cycling world. Look at my puny arm. <laughs> Anyway, um, but actually, um, and as we've kind of alluded to in previous videos and earlier today, um, one that's arguably of, of equal or pretty greater utility for mm -hmm. um, for people out on the out on the road, especially if you're doing kind of longer duration stuff, yeah, kind of lower intensity, you know, zone two, lower zone three efforts. What you're then looking for is actually this VT1, so this lactate threshold value and this is yeah so if we're using this this gym analogy the the bench press is your ftp it's your threshold mm -hmm. your kind of your lactic term point in physiological terms mm -hmm. um what we're now looking for is this lactate threshold it's vt1 this is probably the you know the the threshold that does the heavy lifting within your training is actually yeah, probably the squat or the deadlift it's less oh yeah right. <laughs> it's less now you're talking my language especially <laughs> the deadlift it's less sexy you know it's it's more of the uh the connoisseurs 
choice for I want to say I like that I like that for, yeah 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 that yeah. flattering me yeah for, um, for, for looking at thresholds please do subscribe if you enjoyed the video and look out next week for more science with Adam as to why we can all go faster for longer if we know our lactate threshold one